warning everyone to play it safe this Labor Day weekend as COVID cases continue to surge. We're working for Hawaii. Wake Up Today starts now. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Today on this Aloha Friday, the 3rd of September. Before we get to our top headlines, let's get an update on that weather situation with Kelly Simek because yesterday was gorgeous. Hopefully, today will continue. Yeah, that's right. Good news is the nice, strong trade winds that returned going to be sticking with us. So the nice trade wind weather pattern that's now taken over, sticking with us as well. Now taking a look at what we're going to be seeing for today, partly cloudy conditions to start things off. We do have a few passing low-level clouds, as well as just a few light showers. It's been pretty dry out there, and throughout the day we're expecting the dry conditions to stick with us. Partly to mostly sunny skies with very breezy conditions. Many areas across the state now under a wind advisory. But not only that, because of the very dry conditions, the low humidity, similar to last week when we had these conditions, or at the very beginning of last week before we lost our trade winds, we, because of the dry conditions and the strong winds, do have once again a red flag warning in place for the leeward sections. I'll have details on that, but for this upcoming Labor Day weekend, in terms of any fireworks, any outdoor fires, do make sure you're being careful. Don't be lighting anything that you don't need to be, because again, we have those dry fuels that are remaining in the leeward sections. I'll have details on that, but again, we are going to be remaining in that critical fire weather conditions. Details coming up, but for now, let's send it back over to Ross. Thank you very much, Kel. President Biden is traveling to Louisiana today to survey the damage from Hurricane Ida. The powerful storm made landfall on Sunday, killing at least 13 people in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. About a million homes and businesses are still without power, and about 600,000 have no water service. The remnants of Ida have actually been even more deadly in New England, spawning tornadoes and triggering severe flooding. At least 46 people were killed from Maryland to Connecticut. Back here at home, the Department of Land and Natural Resources is stressing that all residents need to stay safe through the Labor Day weekend. Dallas Ontiveros joins us live from Punchbowl with more details. Morning, Dallas. Good morning, Ross. Yes, we've been hearing about it throughout the entire week, and already the Department of Land and Natural Resources is warning all residents to really abide by all the safety measures that are in place right now, whether that's at the beach parks, the trails, recreational boating, anywhere where gatherings are expected to happen throughout the weekend. Now, we're going to have a live interview coming up in the 6 o'clock hour with the member from the Department of Land and Natural Resources, so we'll get a better idea on what they will be doing and the steps that they'll be taking to ensure that uh, everyone is just staying safe, whether that's large uh, gatherings that seem to happen or cookouts at the beach parks or even the, you know, the hikes and the trails and the campsites as well that can be a little bit busy throughout Labor Day weekend. So we'll get more information for you in the 6 o'clock hour, but if you want a little bit of a head start and catch up of all the coverage that we've been following so far when it comes to Labor Day weekend and what officials and authorities are doing and plan to uh, schedule throughout the weekend. You can head over to our weekend, uh, excuse me, our website at khon2.com. Reporting out here on Punchbowl Street, Dallas Navarro's KHON2 News, working for Hawaii. Thank you very much, Dallas. With Hawaii Island experiencing the highest positivity rate in the state, Mayor Mitch Roth is also asking everyone to play it safe this weekend. On the Big Island, social gatherings are restricted to 10 people indoors and out. Canopies and pop-up tents are not allowed at beaches and parks. And businesses are allowed to operate as long as proper social distancing, mask wearing, and other COVID rules are followed. Mayor Ross says those caught breaking the rules will be fined $250. Back on Oahu, the city has begun issuing termination letters to workers who are not complying with a vaccine mandate. Mayor Rick Blangiardi says of the more than 10,000 city employees, about 8,800 have received at least one dose of the vaccine. About 900 more have applied for religious or medical exemptions, which the mayor says will be granted. Another 400 workers never responded, and many of them are on extended leave, while 49 workers have outright refused to be vaccinated. We've already begun to enforce what we said we were going to do. 
on possible termination, unpaid leave, et cetera, and we'll give everybody due process. We've already issued the first letter today to one of those employees. Employees who are not vaccinated are required to be tested weekly, which will be provided by the city. Public schools on the west side of Oahu are starting to feel the impacts of the surge. Some are dealing with teacher staffing issues and are calling on reinforcements. Within the last two weeks, there have been 902 cases in West Oahu. The vaccination rate for the area is 35 percent, one of the lowest on the island. They don't have counselors to send kids who are acting up in class because counselors are subbing for other classrooms. I heard that registrars have also subbed in other classrooms, that teachers have come into work sick because there are no subs and they're worried about leaving their classrooms unsupervised. In addition to the staffing shortage, officials say the testing mandate might cause teachers to resign. We've reached out to the Department of Education and are waiting to hear back. The Aloha Stadium swap meet is making some changes to help protect the public from COVID. This includes reducing the number of vendors. Only monthly vendors will be allowed to sell their goods, while daily vendors will not be able to take part for the time being. The configuration of the swap meet will also be modified, allowing vendors to be further spaced apart. The number of shoppers will also be reduced to 50% along with parking. The swap meet is open on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And don't forget, the University of Hawaii has canceled the popular KCC Farmer's Market tomorrow and next Saturday. Officials decided to shut it down last week out of an abundance of caution due to the surge. We're told the KCC Market could reopen sooner if the situation improves, and we'll definitely keep you posted. All right, coming up next, how you can help save a life as this National Blood Bank Donation Week kicks off. Plus, the popular Okinawan Festival is happening this weekend. How you can eat some andagi and some other Okinawan treats in just a bit. But before we head to break, Kelly has a look at your current weather conditions. Morning, Kel. Good morning. Thanks, Ross. Well, setting up to be a pretty nice day today. We're going to be taking a look at our... Well, forecast coming up for Labor Day. It's going to be a nice weekend. We're going to be seeing temperature-wise, though, as we switch into our other weather graphics, we're going to be tracking a pretty solid start to the day. We have a state forecast high today of 89 degrees. Right now, 80 in Lihue, 78 degrees in Honolulu, 72 degrees in Lanai City, and 78 in Kailua Kona. Again, state forecast high of 89 degrees, and it's going to be windy out there. So humidity-wise, it's going to feel good. Our trade winds blowing to 30. 30 miles an hour, but the blustery conditions coming in strong. We have a wind advisory for portions of the state, as well as a red flag warning. I'll have details on all of the above coming up next.
that clicks. Tide Pods Child Guard Packaging. Packaging. We're working for Hawaii. You're watching Wake Up Today. Just a reminder, all federal unemployment insurance and assistance programs are coming to an end tomorrow. Now, once these extra benefits run out, only regular unemployment insurance program will be available. Now, if you haven't already applied for that, it could take some time for you to receive aid. Now, if you do not meet the criteria for regular claims, you're urged to seek assistance at the American Job Center. For more information, head to KHON2.com. It's National Blood Donation Week, and the Blood Bank of Hawaii is encouraging donors to roll up their sleeves and help ease a critical shortage. The Blood Bank says it has just 800 donations for the first week of September, which is way too low to keep up with the statewide demand. A single donation can save three lives, and those who donate this Saturday through the Labor Day weekend will receive an individually wrapped Kahlua cake, courtesy of the Hawaiian Pie Company. Now, the 2021 Okinawan Festival kicks off this weekend, and despite it being virtual for the second straight year, you can still take part by ordering from locally owned Okinawan restaurants, many of which are offering special dishes. There will also be a virtual show of the Hawaii United Okinawan Association's YouTube and Facebook pages tomorrow and Sunday from 2 to 5 p.m. It's a lot of fun. We, we've learned a lot over the past year, and uh, I think uh, uh, doing it for the second time is kind of a, uh, a challenge in, yeah. in, 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 in this respect. But, but, but we are learning, and we are... Uh, learning to get more more things accomplished and uh, we, we, we're doing it worldwide we can do this worldwide and just a programming note a one-hour shortened version of the Okinawan festival will air tomorrow night right here on KH12 at 7 p.m. with a rebroadcast on Sunday at 8 p.m. All right, getting vaccinated is the best way, of course, to protect yourself from COVID and the Delta variant. But today, you have another reason to get your shot. Free food. Hawaii Pacific Health's vaccine bus will be at Kapolei Commons in front of Ruby Tuesday from 10 this morning until 3 in the afternoon. Participants will receive a $15 gift card to Ruby Tuesday and Gyukaku. HPH will also have the booster shot for those with a weakened immune system at today's event. So $15 gift card, Ruby Tuesday, and Gyukaku. All right, coming up next, it is payday, and Walmart employees will be seeing a bigger paycheck. Plus, how to get the most out of your virtual work meetings. The big tip from a new study that will make your meetings much more productive when Wake Up Today continues.
Another automaker is feeling the effects of this chip shortage. Jerry Willis has that story and more in your Fox Means Business Report. Jobless claims hitting a post-pandemic low. 340,000 Americans filed first-time unemployment benefits last week. That's a lot fewer than analysts were expecting and the lowest amount since March of last year. Stocks soaring on the good jobless number. The Dow rallied Thursday and the S&P 500 and NASDAQ closed at record highs. GM hitting the brakes on production because of an ongoing chip shortage. General Motors says it's halting production at eight North American plants for the next two weeks. The automaker says they will be temporarily closed because the situation is getting worse. Earlier this week, Ford said it will also cut truck production next week because of the same problem. America is still importing more than it exports, but the gap narrowed a bit in July. The U.S. trade deficit was 70.1 billion for the month. That's about 3 billion less than it was in June. That's business. I'm Jerry Willis. Walmart plans to increase hourly wages by $1 for more than half a million employees. This brings the average Walmart hourly wage up to $16.40 an hour. It's the third time the Arkansas-based retailer has increased employee wages in just the last year. Employees working on the front end of stores will benefit from the increase. They expect those raises to come by September 25th. Well, many of us have had to take part in virtual work meetings during the pandemic. And if you've felt that those are unproductive, you might want to try turning off your camera. A new study has found when people shut off their cameras, they stopped focusing on their own image and instead began focusing more on the meeting itself. The authors suggest that people tend to feel watched when taking part in video meetings, causing many to pay more attention to their own facial expressions instead of the meeting that's actually taking place. That's funny. I do find myself, if you're just like resting, right? And then you look at yourself, you're like, oh no. <laughs> I can definitely see that being a thing. So, hey, just turn off your camera. Maybe you'll focus a little better. All right, well, setting up to be a pretty nice day today. We're going to be seeing warm, sunny, breezy conditions, but maybe a little too much of each of those. I'll have details on why that is coming up in just a bit. But before we head to break, let's take a quick check on the current conditions across the nation. This morning in Los Angeles, we're looking at 64 degrees. 77 in Vegas, 60 degrees in Minneapolis, 82 in San Antonio and New Orleans, 84 degrees in Miami, and 65 degrees in New York City. Your extended forecast is coming up next. With KHON2 weather, Kelly Symec. 
Aloha, everybody. Good morning and happy Aloha Friday. We have really nice conditions ahead of us for today. Our strong trade winds, they're continuing to come through today. And a pretty typical trade wind weather pattern is anticipated with fairly dry conditions. Typically, when we have our windward Malka showers come through with the trade wind flow, we see a little bit more moisture come through. But as the day progresses today, you're going to be tracking, once again, very dry conditions, which we saw take over yesterday as a more dry, stable air mass came through. But for a few passing showers coming through for the windward sides. They'll be coming through, just not too frequently, and definitely nothing too widespread. So it's been pretty dry out there. Now, we have still a few of those high clouds streaming over the far western end of the state. Kauai County are going to be waking up to most of those, but it is pushing away from us. So likely going to see a lot more clarity for today. A few light, wispy, Pretty serious clouds anticipated, but again, for the most part, it has pushed far enough west now to clear us. We have that area of high pressure that's to the north of the state, and it is a strong one. We're going to be seeing winds up to about 30 miles an hour coming through for today, if not stronger than that. I just checked the current conditions across the state. Lanai City, you just clocked in at 25 miles an hour. So already very breezy conditions come. Oh, there you go. I have the current winds right here. And you can see a lot of double digits out there with, again, that very impressive 25 coming through for Lanai City. Now, although the windward sections did see a few passing showers overnight, the fuels remain dry in the leeward areas. Strong winds, low relative humidities, that's going to be resulting in critical fire weather conditions over the leeward sections this afternoon. So because of that, it's where the hot pinks are. Because of that, we do have a red flag warning that's in place across the majority of the state, across the leeward sections and in those areas, as well as a little bit beyond where you can see the tans. We're also under a wind advisory with winds expected up to about 30 miles an hour, gusts to 50. So it's going to be a very blustery day and, again, very dry out there. So to be careful, especially for the upcoming Labor Day weekend, you're not going to be wanting to light any fires outdoors or do any, uh, make sure you're not lighting off, of course, fireworks. Three to five foot faces east and south, flat to two north, west one to three feet. And we do have a small craft advisory in place. Again, the fire, the red flag warning, as well as the small craft advisory and the wind advisory. So do be careful if you're heading out again. A lot going on on the weather front. I'll have details coming up and show your extended forecast in just a bit. But in terms of traffic, things are looking pretty good. It's early on, so things are moving really well. You can see through our KH12 mobile app tracking. Nice greens across the screen. And great news is we don't have any reports of any major accidents or stalls. There was an earlier accident on Lique Lique Highway and North School Street in the Kalihi area. But good news is that cleared already. HPD reporting that the vehicle was already towed. So everything should be open in that area. Let's take a quick check on the roadways. Our live camera showing it. I have a nice commute this early morning, pretty much in all directions. Nice dry road conditions out there. So that's definitely helping too. Coming in from the east side, barely any cars out there. There on the road, so looking good. Make sure you beat the traffic and just get started on your early commute. Well, coming up next, one of the biggest rappers out there just dropped a new album. How Drake's certified lover boy is sparking some drama. Drama mama <laughs> when Wake Up Today returns.
We're working for Hawaii. You're watching Wake Up Today. All right, what well, was a big week for hip hop? Just got a whole lot bigger. That's right. Canadian rapper Drake just dropped his seventh album, Certified Lover Boy. It's the first full length LP from Drake since his. 2018 album Scorpion, and it features a number of other popular rap artists, including Future, 21 Savage, Jay Z, and Travis Scott. Now, earlier this week, there was a feud between Drake and fellow rapper Kanye West erupted on social media, with both artists releasing albums in the same week. <gasps> so they'll be taking their fights from tweets to the charts. Is this what they were tweeting? <laughs> I, I honestly, I think that's like the album cover or something. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I feel like it's associated with his album. Okay, Adam just came in my ear, our producer, and said yes. So I think that's his album cover. I don't know what that's alluding to, but maybe he has a rap song about those emojis. Who knows? It's one of those things where it's a win win for all because at least we're getting some new music. Very true. So, Kanye, Drake. I'm prefer? old school, so I go with Kanye. You? Drake. <laughs> That's funny. Honestly, because aside from Kanye's, like the ones that have made it onto the radio, mm -hmm. I don't really know Kanye's music. And I feel like not a ton have been big hits. Because it's been like when you think of day. Kanye, and I'm great, I'm sure there's so many people that. Fashion. That, lights, you, what song lights. do you think of? Oh, you think of that one. <laughs> I think I ain't saying she a gold digger. And that was like <laughs> forever ago. So. I don't know, maybe maybe some of these this, the, these new songs on the new album are going to make it big. We'll, we'll see, see, but I'm interested <laughs> with Drake because he's collaborating with Jay-Z and that's always going to be. Yeah, and I mean, Drake's been huge yeah. and everywhere, top of the charts over the past decade. So, Kanye, where have you been? Where have you been? <laughs> he's been busy with a marriage and those Kardashians. Sorry, you see who I'm backing. You see who I'm backing in this feud. <laughs> All right, Christine, your pick would be? I take the fifth on this one, <laughs> but at least I know both artists. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Coming up on Wake Up Today, health officials warning everyone to play it safe this Labor Day weekend as COVID cases continue to surge. We've got the details in the live report straight ahead. Cases continue to surge. We're working for Hawaii. Wake up today starts now.
Good morning on this Aloha Friday, the 3rd of September. I'm Christine Ueno. I'm Rashi Mabuku. And before we get to our top headlines, let's get an update on that weather situation with Kelly Simon. And Kel, I guess extra hairspray kind of day and then some? Oh, definitely. It's a very blustery one. We actually have a wind advisory in place for many portions across the state. So be prepared for the gusty conditions just for today. We're going to start to see those winds ease off a little bit more so tomorrow into Sunday. But definitely going to be a very windy one. And it's a big contrast compared to what we've been seeing for the majority of the week when, of course, we were dealing with no trade winds with a light and variable wind pattern. So we saw a big shift come through yesterday. Yesterday it was really nice, though. Dry, sunny, low humidity. And today we're going to be seeing very similar conditions. It's a gorgeous one out there with a state forecast high in the upper 80s once again. So it is going to be a bit on the warmer side. But with the trade winds nice and strong, you're not going to be feeling the heat so much. But we are going to be seeing because of the, well, the conditions that we have, low humidity, the very warm temperatures, and of course the strong winds, a fire threat. So weather conditions critical for seeing fires begin potentially brush fires so we do have a red flag warning that's in place for the leeward sections across the state issued by the national weather service i'll have details on that coming up but let's pop in the traffic center and take a look at the roads because for your aloha friday hopefully everyone continues to drive with aloha throughout the day would love to not report on any incidents which good news i can still say is the case across our main thoroughfares we had an earlier accident that was towed at about 4.40 this morning on the Lique Lique Highway in North School Street area. That's over in Kalihi. But aside from that, there haven't been any incidents reported in the last few hours. So hopefully things continue to move really well. You can see greens across the screen as we're tracking your traffic flow through the KH12 mobile app. Taking a look at the roadways, if we pop into our live cameras, we've been seeing pretty solid commute. Again, not too many cars out there. Granted, it is very early right now, 5.02. So this is typical at this hour, but if you want to beat the traffic, maybe start your Aloha Friday a little bit better, you know, not having to sit around and stop and go traffic, make sure you head out before 6 a.m. because it's been about 6.15 that we really see everything bogged down a bit more. But again, in all directions looking good and even for our windward side, it's pretty dry roads out there. So hopefully that helps with the commute as well. Christine and Ross, back over to you. Thank you, Kelly. 503 right now, staying safe during the Labor Day weekend. That's what DLNR officers are stressing to everyone, and they'll also be watching. Dallas Ontiveros joins us live from Punchbowl Street with the warning. Morning, Dallas. Good morning, Christine Ross. That's right. The Department of Land and Natural Resources is actually going to be joining us in the 6 o'clock hour around 6.30, so make sure you join in for us on that for a live interview. But yes, they are warning everyone, including visitors and residents, about the safety measures in place for this Labor Day weekend. Now, this includes at our beach parks, our state parks, recreational boating, campsites, and any gathering outside the limit in place. Citations will be issued to anyone who does not follow the guidelines in place for the Labor Day weekend. And we saw a little bit this past weekend where there was huge gatherings up to 400 people over on East Oahu. So they're really trying to avoid that as much as possible. So if you want a little bit of a catch up and more coverage of what we know so far ahead of the Labor Day weekend already in effect, you can head over to our website at KHON2.com. Reporting here on Punchbowl Street, Dallas Sonoveros, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii. Thank you, Dallas. With COVID cases on the rise and a spike in hospitalizations, healthcare workers are asking everyone to be extra safe to avoid getting hurt. EMS crews say they're responding to unprecedented levels of calls for service. The director of the city's emergency services department says calls for COVID patients, along with people getting hurt hiking and ocean rescues, are nonstop. And these calls lead to more patients at hospitals during a time when they're already being stretched thin. There's more calls than there are ambulances. We've had times where there's 30 calls and only 21 ambulances. And so sometimes people have to wait, and we never want people to wait for an ambulance or EMS. They may not get a bed upstairs. They may have to wait. There may be longer wait times, and that's unfortunate. That's why we just want everybody to be safe. One way to avoid getting hurt is by staying off the road after having a drink. The Department of Transportation says drugs and alcohol were factors in nearly half of the 60 deadly car crashes this year. The Delta variant is dominating, now making up for almost all COVID cases here in Hawaii. That's according to the Health Department, which reported 1,068 new infections yesterday with four new deaths. 
Officials say the count includes some cases that were not reported because of an interruption in the electronic lab system reporting on Monday. The number of active cases is now at 11,225 with 437 people hospitalized. The state is now at 63.6% fully vaccinated. Kauai County announced 63 new cases, the largest daily total of the pandemic so far. Two residents also died this week. The county says now is the time to come together and shift behavior to prevent more tragedies. Officials say they're testing about 700 people every day just at county sites. Coming up in about 25 minutes, we'll talk live with Kauai County Mayor Derek Kawakami right here on Wake Up Today. Officials are seeing a number of cases linked to the food service industry. In this week's cluster report, officials say a food supplier who was infected dropped off a delivery at a restaurant and infected restaurant workers. Five ended up testing positive. Two were vaccinated. Another cluster of seven is linked to the food service workers who sang together while at a karaoke bar where no masks were worn and no social distancing was practiced. And from July to August, the health department investigated two clusters of 40 linked to a large restaurant chain on Oahu. Officials say both restaurants are in high-risk areas, one in a tourist area and the other in an area with low vaccination rates. The employer also reported a low vaccination rate among employees. 507 right now and more UH athletes have reached endorsement deals with private companies. Bank of Hawaii announced it's endorsing eight Hawaii student athletes. They include Wahine volleyball player Amber Aigidi and Brooke Van Sickle, men's volleyball players Chaz Galloway and Max Rosenfeld, Wahine basketball players Kelsey Mai and Dejai Phillips, and men's basketball players Samuta Avea and Kamaka Hepa. While the exact terms of the agreement are confidential, Bank of Hawaii is offering opportunities like financial education, internships, and professional development and training. So pretty much I'm, overall, I'm just super stoked, like super grateful um, just to be one of the first like, you know, generation of athletes to be able to get this opportunity. It's huge. Like I would have never thought that um, I would have been chosen. But um, since I found out I was, I just want um, I want to make it the best I can be. Bank of Hawaii is a huge sponsor of the UH Athletics Department with a $5 million sponsorship over 10 years. So kudos to Bank of Hawaii because supporting our local athletes, mm -hmm. whether it might not be financial, but training and education internships, they can go a long way. Yep, win-win. All right, coming up next, Kelly will have another live look at your roads. And Spotify better watch out because YouTube is moving up the charts. We'll have more on their music service and the increase in users when Wake Up Today continues.
Good morning. Happy Aloha Friday. We're seeing pretty nice conditions out there on our roadways, so hopefully everyone continues driving with Aloha today. Good news is still no reports of any accidents or stalls. I just checked with HPD, not even on, well, not just our main thoroughfares, but not even on any side streets. So things are looking pretty good this early hour. It's 512 right now, though, so this is pretty typical that we'll see greens across the screen. We usually don't see the biggest slowdowns until about an hour, 615-ish. That's when it really bogs down. But coming in in all different directions, from the windward sides, the Pali, the Lique Lique, the H3, all moving along really well. Coming in in all directions on the H1, H201, H2, things are looking good. So it's a nice start to the day. And taking a look at the roadways, we've been seeing, as if we pop into our live cameras, dry road conditions even for many of our windward sections. So take a look at the Pali, nice and dry. And so that's going to help things move along. As we know, when we see wet road conditions, it typically leads to some big slowdowns. And luckily, it doesn't look like that's going to be an issue for us this morning. So through the H1H2 merge, still moving along well. You can see a lot more cars definitely hitting the roads, but nothing slowing up just yet. So drive times nice and low. Let's take a look at those. Coming in from Eva Beach to town, it'll take you 31 minutes. From Waianae, 40, Mili Lani, 19, and your commute from Wahiwa going to take about 29 minutes. Ross, back over to you. Thank you very much, Kel. 513 right now, and Spotify better watch out because YouTube is moving up the charts. Google reports that 50 million people have either subscribed or are trying out YouTube Music and YouTube Premium. Now, this is a 20 million person jump from the 30 million users reported in December of 2020. Although YouTube has a way to go before it reaches the 165 million subscribers of Spotify or the 78 million on Apple Music, the numbers show that YouTube is slowly becoming a contender as a subscription service. Coming up next, a warning from Maui police as we head into the Labor Day weekend. Plus, the popular Okinawan Festival is happening this weekend. How you can catch some highlights when Wake Up Today continues. and Wake Up Today is sponsored by Stanford Car Development. Excellence in architectural design and community planning. Since 1990, Stanford Car Development has succeeded as an award-winning development firm completing over 5,000 units. Our mission to develop quality residential communities that island families call home. Providing increased affordable housing opportunities utilizing the latest technology and materials. Design distinctive neighborhoods with a broad range of housing for our island communities to live, work, and play. With a passion for architecture and community design. Stanford Car Development. We know Hawaii and we build for Hawaii. He handled everything. What do I do now? I see this too often. I wish people would plan earlier so their family's taken care of in case the unexpected and unfortunate happens. Proper and early planning such as wills, trusts, powers of attorney, and health care directives will protect you and your family throughout your lifetime and assure your assets will be available for your loved ones after you're gone. Let Sterling & Tucker help put your affairs in order before it's too late. Sterling & Tucker. Start planning today. Why do I love our Savior Lutheran School? My teachers. The after school programs. All the friends I've made. My education. My faith. There are so many reasons to love our Savior Lutheran School. So come and see for yourself. Cracking concrete and failing guardrails on Hawaii's buildings are a huge risk for all of us. Structural Systems has been in business for over 34 years, offering durable and corrosion proof guardrail systems and fixing Hawaii's failing concrete structures. Upgrade your property value with current designs to give older buildings a new, modern look. They provide spalling repairs, concrete repairs, and guardrail replacement with the longest warranties in Hawaii. Whether it's a condo, high rise, or parking structure, they're your commercial concrete and railing contractor. Call Structural Systems today for a free assessment. Dreaming of the day you can travel safely to your favorite places? Bank of Hawaii has a giveaway that can help you plan your next getaway. You can't test this. Announcing Bank of Hawaii's 5 million Hawaiian miles giveaway. Each time you use Bank of Hawaii's contactless debit card during our 5 million Hawaiian miles giveaway, you're entered for a chance to win enough miles for a round trip to L.A., Orlando, and more. So for the chance to bank miles for when we're all ready to travel again, use the debit card from the only Bank of Hawaiian miles, Bank of Hawaii. You can't test this. This portion of the K2N2 News is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. 
You're watching Wake Up Today with Christina Wino and Rosh Yamabuku. Welcome back. It's 517 on this Aloha Friday. Here is today's Need to Know. Hawaii Island officials are cracking down on gatherings this Labor Day weekend. There can be no more than 10 people in a group, and canopies and pop-up tents are not allowed at beaches and parks. The city of Honolulu has begun issuing termination letters to workers who are not complying with the vaccine mandate. A vast majority of workers have gotten at least one dose or filed for an exemption. And just a reminder, the University of Hawaii has canceled the popular KCC Farmers Market tomorrow due to COVID concerns. It's expected to return on the 18th. And get ready to eat some on the ghee because the 2021 Okinawan Festival is being held this weekend. You can see highlights tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here on k 2 then again on Sunday night at 8. A warning now from Maui police as we head into the holiday weekend. Jack Giss from KOI Radio Group has more on that. Morning, Jack. Good morning and happy little Friday, everybody. Here's Lace Van County. The Labor Day holiday weekend is one of the deadliest times of the year in terms of impaired driving fatalities. And the Maui Police Department's traffic division will be out enforcing their zero tolerance response to impaired driving. The public can expect saturation patrols where there's a noticeable increase in traffic enforcement to include impaired driving checkpoints. Beginning today and continuing through the holiday weekend, the Maui Police Department's traffic division will be out in force to address impaired driving along with speeding and other dangerous driving behaviors which have contributed to far too many deaths and injuries on our roadways. So let's keep it safe and have a great Labor Day holiday weekend. Reporting from Maui in the KOI Radio Studios, I'm Jack Gis for Wake Up Today. Back to you. Thank you, Jack. Coming up in sports, the UH Wahine volleyball team suffers a heartbreaking loss in Utah. Plus, the Rainbow Warrior football team will make their much anticipated debut at their new home stadium. We'll hear from the fellas in just a bit. But before we head to break, are you looking to buy a new home? Here's a quick breakdown of some of the current mortgage rates.
KHON2 Sports, Rob DeMello. How's it going, everybody? After taking two or three in their season opening Rainbow Wahine Classic this past weekend, the University of Hawaii women's volleyball team jump started their three match road trip in the Beehive State yesterday by suffering a staggering loss at Utah Valley. Rainbow Wahine, who most recently swept past Texas AM in Manoa on Sunday, was looking to ride the wave of momentum, but instead found themselves paddling back to the line after wiping out. Stunned in the first set after recording five service errors would trade sets in two and three putting their backs against the wall and even faced aloha ball in the fourth before pushing back scoring three straight to force a fifth and decisive set for despite getting a career best 20 kills from brooke van sickle and nine blocks by amber igd wolverines held home court as the western athletic conference member pulled off the upset for their first win over uh in four tries rainbows dropped to two and two and it won't get any easier folks with matches against number 22 san diego and 19th ranked utah over the next two days Elsewhere with the Green Agent Top of Trim, the Rainbow Wahine soccer team opened their three-game road swing in the Pacific Northwest facing Gonzaga with a scoreless drought continued for UH. Held without a goal for a third straight game, that's 290 minutes to open the year as the Rainbows were blanked on Thursday 5-0, falling to 0-2-1. Up next for the Lady Bows, it's at Washington State on Sunday before closing out their week in the Palouse at Idaho next Wednesday. Back here at home, the Rainbow Warrior football team will make their debut at the retrofitted Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex on Saturday when UH plays host to Portland State. Now, of course, due to COVID restrictions at this time, fans are not allowed to attend. But according to the Bows, who are in search of a bounce back after last week's loss to UCLA, it's a great honor to play in the first football game on campus in the program's 112-year history. I mean, we're creating history. I mean, we're the first one to play on campus in the uh, Ching Complex. So, I mean, I think it's exciting, you know, bring it closer to home. It's in a neutral area, so hopefully when we get fans to come back, it'll be a lot of people that'll show up. It's super exciting. Uh, obviously, it's going to be different um, than playing in Aloha. Uh, so we're, we're kind of, uh, I mean, it's just going to be new, new, uh, new grounds for us. So it'll be interesting to see how it, how it plays out. Um, we're looking forward to having our fans back. Uh, and having them be able to watch us and support us. Um, but yeah, we're, we're super excited. From the bottom to, to the top, um, I mean, I saw it um, built. I mean, now, I mean, it looks wonderful. I mean, uh, shout out to all the people that uh, made this uh, happen. But I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, no fans, but I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. We're focused on what we can control, and, and that's uh, playing our game, um, just being focused in and watching film and just showing up on Saturday. Kick off between the Warriors and Vikings tomorrow set for 6 p.m. The game will be televised on Spectrum Sports pay-per-view. At this time, Bows are listed as 21 and a half point favorites. And over in the Sunshine State, Mililani graduate UCF quarterback Dylan Gabriel opened his junior season last night against perennial Mountain West power Boise State. And early nights were in a 21 nothing hole before getting the bounce house jump in, which included hitting freshman Titus Mokiao Atimalala, the Campbell grad in 29. 19 cover two Mariota award winners first collegiate touchdown DG with 312 yards passing and four scores leading UCF on a big time rally 36 31 in the loss Kahuku's Kekaula Kaniho had eight tackles there's your morning look at sports have a great day everybody Awesome. Thanks so much, Rob. Will do. You have a great day, too. Top stories of the morning are just ahead, and that includes a live interview with Kauai Mayor Derek Kawakami about his plea to the community to come together to curb the spread of COVID. But before we head to break, we have a birthday Happy wish. Birthday Wishes you. this morning are for Kai Money Aikau Paiva. His favorite foods are poi and shrimp chips, and he loves playing with anything with wheels. Happy first birthday, Kai Money, from your parents and the rest of your ohana, and of course, from all of us here at Wake Up Today.
We're working for Hawaii. You're watching Wake Up Today. Thanks for joining us on this Aloha Friday. It's the 3rd of September. I'm Christine Ueno. I'm Rashi Mabuku. And before we get to that live interview with Kauai County Mayor Derek Kawakami, let's get an update on that weather situation with Kelly Simon because, Kel, mm -hmm. strong trade winds, very strong. Yes, it's breezy out there. And for many areas, we're actually under wind advisory. So winds today up to about 30 miles an hour. The blustery conditions, it looks like the strongest winds are going to be coming through today before they slightly ease tomorrow and then really ease much more so on Sunday. Day. So for today, partly sunny skies to start off the day, but the mostly sunny conditions, the windy weather, all sticking with us throughout the day. Now our trade winds are expected to pass us a few light clouds and showers, but for the most part, it's going to be pretty dry out there, and we're just kind of getting a look at first light. And you can see we're definitely going to be tracking a lot of clarity out there. There's a few low-level clouds, but for the most part, again, it's been nice and clear, and for the most part, dry. With that said, though, we do still have some showers that are a couple of hours out that are going to be making their way on. Sure. So expect a few hit or miss showers. We have a fairly stable atmosphere in place, though, so we're not expecting anything heavy. But the showers that we do see should be very light and should be fairly quick moving. Now, of course, we did see a few windward showers in the overnight hours, but for the leeward sections, it's still been really dry, and so the fuels for the leeward sides remain very dry out there for the leeward sections. That plus the low humidity, the very strong winds, the warm temperatures, going to be leading to critical fire weather conditions, and because of that, the national. Weather Service has issued a red flag warning with the potential of seeing some of those uh, fires starting later on. So I'll have details on how we can keep safe in the coming days, especially for your Labor Day weekend. I'll have that in just a bit. But let's hop right into the traffic center real quick to see what we're looking at. And really, it's not much good news on that front. Traffic is moving along really nicely. A lot of greens across the screen. So great news on that front. Checking with HPD. Good news is we don't have any reports of any major accidents or stalls on our main thoroughfares. We did hear reports of an accident, though. It happened uh, just a few minutes ago on Kalani Ano Ole Highway over in Waimanalo, um, Kaiona Beach Park, just fronting that. There was an accident. And then over on Tinker Road at Bellows, we're also hearing reports of an accident over there. So a few side incidents, but hopefully those get cleared and don't slow things down for us too much. You can see, though, again, the flow map showing a lot of greens across the screen. Let's take a quick check on those cameras, see what we're looking at. And already, H1 Kunia, a lot more cars hitting the roads. It hasn't slowed down just yet. It looks like maybe moving just under, under the speed limit right here at the H1-H2 merge, but still moving along pretty decently. Carpool to work or school if you can. You can see the zipper lane much less crowded than those main lanes right here at the H1 Kaahumanu overpass. So get an early start and take advantage of the nice conditions. Ross and Christine, back to you. Thank you very much, Kel. 532 right now, and President Biden is traveling to Louisiana today to survey the damage from Hurricane Ida. The powerful storm made landfall on Sunday, killing at least 13 people in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. About a million homes and businesses are still without power, and about 600,000 have no water service. The remnants of Ida have actually been even more deadly in New England, spawning tornadoes and triggering severe flooding. At least 46 people were killed from Maryland to Connecticut. It has been one week since Kauai County's mayor put out a plea to residents to come together to protect the community to avoid a lockdown. So is Mayor Derek Kawakami seeing positive changes or do more restrictions need to return? He joins us now to talk about that. Good morning to you, Mayor. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for having me. I want to start by taking a look at the numbers. The case count right now, record high, 63 new cases reported in Kauai County yesterday. What are your thoughts? I mean, do you think people there are changing their behavior in the week since you made that plea? Has there been any type of progress, not just with cases, but I'm talking about hospitalizations, testing, and vaccination? Yeah, well, the reports coming back is we're seeing, uh, again, you know, another, you know, big demand for tests and more people getting vaccinated. Um, we're going to have to wait and see. You know, we brought our community members. We brought members from our faith-based community, from the business community, coaches, and more and more people are starting to speak to their friends about doing the right thing. The next 72 to 96 hours will be very telling on whether this community can come together. 
and do the right thing. We'll wait a while to see um, if the positivity rates start to go down. But, you know, at this point, we have a very high level of concern about the overall health care system across the state of Hawaii, including ours. Even though our hospitals right now, as we speak, are rather stable for Kauai, it doesn't take much to push them to the edge. If it doesn't take much, and you have said in the past that, you know, one thing that it will take to flatten the curve is a lockdown, why not implement that now or request it? At what point would you request it? Well, the governor would request it. It would be his call at this point, and that's what would make the most sense because all of the islands are seeing this surge that hasn't seen a flattening of the curve. I will tell you this. Coronavirus and COVID-19 is going to be here. People need to learn how to coexist. We set out to give our people a skill set and have them well informed. The basic steps are very simple. Avoid gatherings, wear masks, and take care of your health. Now, we cannot keep on having these very harsh restrictions because it comes with a high set of consequences. And there's many resources not available, like PPP to keep businesses afloat. So we have to do it for our restaurant owners. We have to do it for our neighbors. But we have to do it for our kids that are too young. But right now, think about your health care system. Think about your health care workers. The people you depend on are asking for your help. Now, the Safe Access Oahu program will begin in 10 days because you did mention restaurants. Why not implement that on Kauai? And, and when could Kauai see a similar program? Well, we're going to see how it pans out for the city and county of Honolulu. You know, it's something we definitely are looking at. We just met with the Chamber of Commerce yesterday to see what the temperature was from businesses on implementing a system. Um, you know, whenever we have a program rollout, we have to make sure that the restaurants and retail establishments that are going to be under the program have enough manpower. One of the big concerns that we have is these establishments don't have the manpower to operate as we speak today because they're still looking for workers. We're also going to see if the program actually does anything to low lower the number of cases. So it's something that we're looking at, but we'd like to collect some data. I know you just mentioned that the governor would request some kind of lockdown, but the mayors also have the authority to request any kind of restriction to the governor. Of course, he makes the final say. What is your message heading into this Labor Day weekend, and, and what are you going to be looking at in the next 72 hours? For the next 72 hours, we're going to ramp up our law enforcement presence. People should think of it as like a click it or ticket campaign or sobriety checkpoints where every once in a while when there's a high level of concern, our officers will be out there to keep everybody safe. As far as restrictions, people need to realize that the numbers will settle down when we start to settle down a bit. We're not asking for big sacrifices. We're asking for small changes. We're asking people to avoid large gatherings. We want people to be healthy and have fun. I hope to see some people surfing with me out in the lineup. You know, I like to see families playing with their kids. So there's definitely ways to enjoy the Labor Day weekend without putting the whole community at risk. So those small changes make a big difference in keeping everyone safe this Labor Day weekend. Thank you so much, Mayor, for joining us again this morning. You have a good Labor Day weekend, too. Thank you. You, too.